Zelda 2B, Red Class, um, January 30, January 30, Monday morning. Um, doing a quick review on the Circle, uh, Assessment 4, though today we're going to mess around with um, uh, Standard 2, which can be a little bit tricky, but let's see if I can get us through it uh, in the next four minutes. In any case, um, it says move three to the right, and so we have the three. Um, because it's going to go in the parentheses with a minus sign, we have to do the opposite. So instead of a plus three going to the right, we have to make it a minus three, just like with the parabola. Um, going down, it says go down two. Uh, normally, it would be a minus two, but because there's a, a parenthesis with a negative or um, opposite sign in front of that k, we know it has to do the opposite. That's plus two. And lastly, they gave us the radius. The radius is a four. Um, and so that four from there, uh, we are simply going to put that where we see uh, in our... And we win. That's the formula. Uh, now, graphing is not a big deal. Um, so here's the deal. Let's see if I can put that in. Uh, the formula first. Um, the formula. Sure. The formula is going to be a parenthesis. Where is the thing? X. What am I going to put with the X? Someone say it out loud, please. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I heard one, but I didn't. I didn't go with it. So that minus 3 is the left and right, so maybe I should do that. What if I did that? What if I put the x under this guy and the y under that guy? And that way, people know who goes with who. Uh, left and right goes with the x. Um, and up and down goes with the y. What if I put with the y someone different, please? Plus 2, thank you. It's right there waiting for you. Uh, here's the formula. We're just plugging it in. Uh, and I think on the assessment, actually, you let you have the formula. And so from here, the last part, last part. Uh, what am I putting for the r, please? Yeah, yeah, four. No big deal. Yeah, yeah. Take a look at that. See how you feel about it. Hope it doesn't mess with you. Uh, you have it already. This is just me reminding you. The only way you don't have it is either you were absent that day or you were preoccupied on that day. All right. Uh, pause right there. Anybody want to have it and try and get to the new stuff? Because, um, again, you're going to see uh, the assessment for standard two, which is a little bumpy, so let's see if we can get through it in enough time. If I were, in fact, drawing the circle, Notice I didn't put in a center here for those who are new. So it's for old, you already have it. Um, the center is just where you have to move it. Now, the paragraph tells you where to actually move it. These new numbers is so that we can put it into the formula. What the heck does he mean there? It goes like this. If they say move it three units to the right, okay. One, two, three. And two units down, one, two. There is the center. Um, what is the coordinates of the center? It said three down to 3, and then go down to, there's the actual center of the circle. So taking the center, no big deal. Um, the other part for those who are new, maybe you miss it, if they give you the center, the formula is automatic. Notice the 3 goes first and the 2 goes second. That part's no big deal. Notice the 3 turns into a negative and the 2 turns into a positive because it does the opposite. So if you are given a center, that's one of the easiest ways to get um, the formula because the numbers go in the same order with the opposite sign. Uh, what did they say the radius was? It was a 4, so you just count out 4 in north, south, east, west, and vice versa. So it goes 1, 2, 3. I count out that way. I count out 1, 2, 3. Oh, it should be 4, sorry. I'm finishing this one. And again, if you were here last time, hopefully you feel super smart because you're like, yeah, I know how to do that. Yeah, sweet. Uh, whereas maybe at some point you didn't know. 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's education. One, two, three, four, that's education. One, two, three, am I recording right now? Oh, good. One, two, three, four. Once you put it out like that, you just make a like, uh, basic circle thing. And voila. Every time you count out, those are your radius in all the different directions. If you don't have that, you can put that in. If you do have it, then of course you can just kind of double check, make sure it looks uh, like what it should look like. On the assessment, they ask you to do this. One thing I did say, and I, I'll say it for some people, the circle on the assessment turns out to be too big. Technically, what I was supposed to teach you, which I didn't want to mix in all that, is scaling. Scaling simply says, if this wants us to do it out to 20, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 20, it'll be all out here, 20 out here, 20 out here. The scaling says, instead of making each one of the blocks 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe make them 2, 4, 6, 8. Like make each block something like that, or 3, 6, 9, so that when it's time to draw the circle, even though it's 10, well, it's 2, 4, 6, 8. It'll make it smaller. That's what one of the things they wanted on there. I didn't do it, and so I, and when I grade it, I'll still take it with the big circle. But when you get it back, if you want to redo it and rescale it, you could. Um, so that's what they said on there, scaling. 
All right, so that's a review on the circle. Uh, if you were here, that should be like, oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. If you weren't here, at least you got to hear it once before you rewatch that video. If you, um, even if this was fast, you can always go back and I send a little message. Uh, need a review, need or want a review, or absent. Uh, click here to see video. Um, but again, you can always go to YouTube. That's where they are. Type in Algebra 2. Thomas uh, will usually get you to there. And if you click on uh, where that is, they'll have all the videos, not just for your class, but for the other class. So you have to kind of find your class uh, and the topic. Next thing I want us to do in the way of a little review, uh, I want you to punch something in your calculator, which you will ultimately need to um, in the answer. Check and see if you have a calculator nearby. Um, let me pass out this new handout. Uh, and with a number punch in, so that it can be big, ugly, and scary. Yeah, yeah, that's big, ugly, and scary. Let's put in... Um, You're going to write this down first, and then we'll use it after that. Negative three. Um, sure, I'll do this to try and make it confusing. That way, if they have to do it, they'll be confusing. Uh, T. Write this down. Negative three T squared minus 9t uh, plus 84. Please write that down. You're going to write that down and then we're going to do, um, let's write it down on your paper, just in case it disappears on mine. Eventually we're going to put some numbers in the place of t. Okay. Now here's the important thing, as some of you are still writing that down. Um, when we use our calculators, uh, these especially, um, x will take the place of any other variable. Like you can write, um, this is called a polynomial just because it has several pieces. There's one term separated by a minus sign. There's a second term separated by a plus sign. There's a third term. Whenever they use term, they say anything separated by a plus or minus sign. You're about to punch this ugly thing in, but without the letter T, we're going to have to choose some numbers. Um, so first thing I want you to do, besides erasing it, um, is to, um, we're going to use uh, the letter X for these guys. So go ahead and punch it in. Um, punch it under the Y equals. The first time we'll do it under the Y equals, but the second time we're going to do, um, we're going to do blue button mode, um, blue button mode in the second time. But the first time, go ahead and Y equals. Um, and from there, the second time, when you do it into Y equals, you're going to use X's. Why are they going to use X's? Because T's are not available. And your calculator sometimes doesn't even read T's. Will that mess up the problem? No, it won't. So put it in with X's. I'll come around just to peek over your shoulder. Um, just remember, hey, what if I forgot where to punch things in? Um, go ahead and look on a neighbor. If you, uh, if you know how to do it, um, just check the next door to make sure that the person next to you, once you get it in, I'm going to want you to show it to a neighbor. How do I get those squares on there? Um, of course, you can hit the X for the second uh, X square button. You can also um, use the the carrot sign, the carrot sign right under the clear button. So if I want to raise x to the second power, I hit that carrot button, then I hit a 2 there. Um, all right, I see, I see most of those got those in. If anyone doesn't have the hand, of course. But again, show it to someone next door so they can see to make sure that it looks the same as someone else's. Because let's say you find something wrong, and I don't catch it. Uh, your neighbor is kind of your backup, helping you pull your bucket there. Uh, so here's the first thing we're going to do. Um, we're going to go to um, blue button or this blue button mode. Blue button mode. It's right there. It's a big quit button. Um, to quit means I'm going to just a regular calculator. Okay. So if I do blue button and I do mode right next door to it, blue button and then mode right next door to it, it gets it says quit. It says clicker. Let me just do regular calculator. The reason we do regular calculator is uh, in the y equals. You have to go to table to find the answer. But what if I told you I want to find out what this polynomial, this parabola, this quadratic, all the same name for the same thing. So if someone says, hey, do something with this quadratic. Quadratic? What, is, what do you mean quadratic? The minute you see the power of 2, they can call it a quadratic. Also, this is also, um, you know how when we were doing y equals, uh, let's say, uh, Negative 3 square, remember when we were graphing those? Uh, when we graphed those, there was a parabola. 
if we were to put a plus 84 at the end of it, you know, we move it up 84. Um, so this is actually uh, a parabola as well. Anytime you see this little guy, it is a parabola. Uh, what would you do with that 9x thing, though? Well, it kind of doesn't matter for this case. What I want you to be able to see is, oh, okay, I remember this part is going to be pointing down. It's going to be uh, narrow because of the 3, and the 84 is going to make it go up or down. Um, what does he want us to do right now? He wants us to find out what this parabola is equal to. If x were equal to, uh, let's do uh, an easy number. Let's put in a, a 3 in there. So what is it that they're going to do? They're going to type in negative x. Oh, let me do this thing so that um, someone can see it. They'll do negative 3, parenthesis, um, for the second power, minus 9, parenthesis, um, plus 84. But inside those parentheses, you're actually going to put in a number. Hey, what number are you going to put in? This first time, we're going to try it by putting in x is equal to 3. Now, I don't know what the answer is going to be. Um, hopefully, once we get enough answers, we'll find out. But what is it that they're doing right now? Um, they're going to put a 3 inside of the parentheses. Why isn't Thomas putting a 3 in there? Because he's also going to have you do it a second time with a decimal number. And that will be your calculator practice as we'll go to today's um, easier problems and get started there. So, what does Thomas want you to do right now? Type out this long guy right here, but put a, um, a 3 in the place of parentheses. And that's just to show you that no matter how ugly the problem, no matter how big the numbers, it doesn't matter. As long as you know how to punch in your calculator and hit enter at the end, you'll get the final answer. Now this one I am going to check off on each um, one. Not check off, but I'm gonna, I do want to come around and see your answer. What if you're stuck? Can you ask the person next to you? Can you look on theirs? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm going to start, um, check. Oh. Second time, punch in uh, 1.5 in the uh, equation. This is for people who are at home who are seeing the video um, into that form to practice with your calculator. Um, and so the learning target for today, to be able to factor a polynomial and find its zeros. Once in math, I, I didn't make it up. I just kind of teach it to try and, uh, you know, make a living. But there are different things that they will name with the same thing we'll get two different names, which makes a student think that they're learning something brand new. But if a student knew that this thing called zeros, last unit, when you had the parabola, you had to find the x-intercepts, where does it hit the x line? Well, they're naming that the same thing. Why they're calling it zeros is usually, um, in a real world situation, zero is where you hit the ground. Because they're going to ask you, well, what does a zero mean in this context? Uh, he threw a football. It was in the shape of the the, uh, the um the trajectory of the football was in the shape of a parabola. What do the zeros mean? Well, one zero is where does the football hit the ground? They'll say when he threw the football, it went through the air. What does the maxima mean? Well, that's the highest point uh, of the football was flying. So what they're going to try and do is basically give you the same stuff and put new labels on it and see if maybe they can trick a few of you. Um, they will be able to. Uh, so my goal today, as a math student, as a person who hates to, hates to see people frustrated with math, give them the easy piece, make sure they have it. Tell them that there are four pieces, but if they get three out of four, they're a winner. And that way, they know they don't have to have it all. So, let's do this. Um, today we're going to be putting together a puzzle. Uh, here are the four puzzle pieces, so that as you know when you're getting them, you go, okay, got the first puzzle piece. Uh, so let's see, with a highlight, I should have had them... Um, uh, highlight the word factor. Um, where are you highlight? Uh, will it allow me to highlight? Well, factor. You want to highlight factor. Polynomial. Yeah, that's a big word. Polynomial is just that thing you're punching into your calculator. If anyone doesn't know, like, what the heck is a polynomial? That big thing that you punch into your calculator? It's a polynomial. Poly means it has a lot of pieces to it. Nomial means it has terms. So the minute I have three terms, I got a polynomial. I'm going to find the zeros on my highlight x-intercepts, because we're, we're experts at x-intercepts. We did those before. All right. Come on, Thomas. I thought about this even this morning. <laughs> waking up at, like, at my alarm goes to like at 6 or whatever. And I'm wondering, am I going to be able to present this thing clearly so that the rest of us will learn it? I'm stressed about it. Even though I should just let it go. So it's good to get those who don't. Don't, but I can't do that. Here it goes. Factor. <laughs> You need to uh, know, um, first thing you got to do is you got to factor a polynomial. When you hear the word factor, uh -huh. 
what should you think? I know when I hear the word fact, I automatically think of a certain word. Um, anybody know what, what a factor is or what you should think when you hear the word factor? I get to tell you. Sweet. When you hear the word factor, you should think um, multiply. Please factor the polynomial. Please write the polynomial as a multiplication problem. I'm going to show you an example of factoring just with a regular number in a moment, and you'll be like, oh, that's what I should think when I factor? Yeah, so up above, and I don't know what your space is, um, and this sheet will probably be a good one for your six pages for this new unit. Um, so if I were, uh, if I gave you the number 15, and I said, please factor, factor 15, let me see if I can move you and erase you. Factor 15. Factor 15. To me, that just means, hey, Thomas, rewrite 15 as a multiplication problem. I got two choices. I could um, write 15 as 1 times 5. Oh, I'm sorry, 1 times 15. Boom. Each one of those numbers is a factor. Uh, each one of those numbers is a factor. Um, we're like, one is a factor? Yeah. Place one of the numbers that you need to multiply to count to, mo um, to get 15. So 1 times 15 uh, gives you 15. Let me do another one. So let's try this here. Um, so let's try. 1 is a factor. 15 is a factor. Here's another version of that. If I did, um, can someone say out loud another way to get to 15 multiplying? Uh, 3 times 5 or 5 times 3. I heard it. Three is a factor, and five is a factor. How can I tell? Because these are numbers that I can multiply together to get the answer. What does he want to get from this? Like, what are we supposed to remember from this? Whenever we hear the word factor, it has to be something about a multiplication problem. I already started 15. When it finishes, it's going to be something times something, and normally what you will see are parentheses right next door to each other. So again, um, all these numbers we say are factors of 15. How do we know? Because if you multiply them times some other number, you'll get 15. Factor. Just think of the word multiply. That's one of the four pieces of the puzzle. Piece number two. I hate to write zeros. It kills me to write zeros. But number two, um, you're going to find zeros. Well, you found zeros last unit. We call them x intercepts at that point. And intercepts. These are the four pieces of the puzzle that I'm going to try and get you to find. Um, hopefully in about 35 minutes or less so that you have like about uh, 30 minutes to uh, attempt to um, find all the assessment. Uh, this will be the last uh, of the four assessment pieces. The third piece of the puzzle. The way they're going to ask for it on the test, and I don't know why they did this, it's out of order. Um, I'll put mine in the in the order that I would give it, so it can go smoothly, but when you get to the test, the third and fourth one, they're going to flip them, so you just got to be careful. Um, a line of symmetry. This I'm going to call the LOS. Okay, I spell it right, symmetry. With a parabola, a rainbow, a line of symmetry, you just find the highest point. And when you get there, that's the line that's going to cut the thing in half. In other words, you find the maxima. What's the minimum? Last unit. You can draw a line straight up. It cuts it in half, um, and it writes a formula, LOS. LOS is just line of symmetry, so we don't have to write out that long sentence every single time. And the LOS is a formula. That formula will always be x equals a number. When we find the, the, uh, the top of the rainbow, the bottom of the rainbow, when we chop it in half, it's going to hit the x-axis, that x-line at some point, at, at 3, it'll hit at 7, at, at 34. Wherever it hits it, boom, that's your answer. x equals boom, whatever that number is. These three, you win the game. Okay? These three, you win the game. <laughs> First one, not too bad. Second one, pretty easy. Third one, hmm, medium. And here comes the fourth one. The fourth one is what you just did in your calculus. 
So I put that hard thing at the beginning, not connecting, not connecting it to anything, so that you can feel like, oh, I can punch it in. The last one is that you need of the puzzle, which again, you only need three out of four. But for those people who can get the fourth one, you need to find the um, the maxima or minima slash vertex maxima. Yeah, maxima, minima. The word for all of that is vertex. Why is he putting the extra words, not just one word, so that way we don't have to be confused? Because on a test, unfortunately, they might choose one word or the other. And I don't want you all messed up because they did a different word like, dang, why don't you just tell us the other word so that way if we saw it, we'd at least have a chance. Four pieces of the puzzle. Um, this will conclude this assessment. So believe it or not, in terms of uh, trying to help you fill your buckets, um, we're near the end of the second part of the buckets. Three and four are the only other new pieces. Five is a review. So you're, in a way, you're almost halfway through. I feel like we just started this um, this semester, but you're almost halfway through because all those Fridays, so you got the way ahead of the Tuesday, Thursday class. Uh, and I didn't ask it, even though I already started filling your buckets. Uh, I want to ask a question, can I help you fill your buckets? Thumbs up, like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, Sideways, like, yeah, I don't know, I feel like it today, um, but whatever. Can I help you fill your buckets? Give me thumbs, please, so I can know. Um, the way I, I, I do this again, so by you saying yes, and I appreciate it, um, it helps me feel like I'm, I'm actually trying to help you versus I'm trying to force something on you. If you're not for it today, just sit in the room and uh, write, and then we'll do it again next semester. Here we go. Step one. Fast three. You've seen this before, I believe. Um, this whole magic X thing, let me find out. If anyone has done the magic X thing, when you see this, oh, I recognize it. Just raise your hand just so I see. Um, sweet, sweet, sweet. Now, the good news for those who can raise your hand, they're going to give you another unit for something you've seen or done before. For those who haven't, uh, let's try and see if we can say it. Um, this one is done for you. Right here, you have a parabola. Again, above this thing, for the first three, I want you to feel that this thing that you've seen a million times before, maybe, you never thought of it as a parabola. How does he know it's a parabola? Well, it has a little two. If we just had y equals a little two, you know it'd be a parabola. This nine says we're going to move it up nine. You may remember this from the last one. Okay. Um, put parabola up here. Parabola, uh, if you need to know how to spell it. And the question you're going to be asked over and over, and we'll do it on this page. Again, for those who've done it before, no big deal. We'll do one with just all positives. We'll do one with, with negatives. This will be one out of the four. You only need three, and this is a freebie. The question they ask you is, um, what are two numbers that when you multiply those two numbers, you'll get the last one? But when you add those same two numbers together, you'll get the middle guy. Hey, what are two numbers that when I multiply them, I'll get a 9. But when I add those same two numbers, I'll get a 6. Well, you put in this thing, some people call it a magic X. Um, the last number always goes on top. It's on your paper. I'm just marking on mine because over there we'll do it for you. Um, on the bottom when we do that here, usually I put a multiplication sign and I circle it. Then I put a plus sign and I circle it. They put in the answers for you already, which is a bad example to begin with. Usually you don't want the same numbers to be it because you don't know like which is which. In any case, when we get over there, the numbers will be different. Uh, what are the numbers that when you multiply them, uh, they give you a 9? Oh, 3 times 3 will give you 9. But the same two numbers, they'll give you the bottom. Oh, 3 plus 3 will give you 6. Therefore, they win. We found out t uh, two numbers. So when we multiply them, give you the top, and we add them, give you the bottom. Now, in order for this to be in factored form, you have to write a multiplication problem. How do you write a multiplication problem? You do it like this: two parentheses next door to each other means multiply. The threes go right inside um, the plus three because they're positive. Plus three, and the extra part is the x's. The x's is the extra part. You just got one of the four points that are on the assessment. Okay. We wrote this polynomial in fact on the two factors. All right, so this is going to do it over and over. All right, um, over here, um, do me a favor. Please guess what are two numbers that when you multiply them, they'll give you a 12. 
But those same two numbers, when you add them together, they'll give you a 7. Write them in either side, uh, over there. And this is the part that I was saying, um, for some of you, you have to think about it. Okay, think of my time field. What are two numbers that I'm multiplying to in 12? But then if I add those same two numbers, once you guess it, and again, if you have to look on a neighbor, I'm okay with that this first time. I don't want you to make it all high, like, oh, I forgot how to do this. You can look on. Um, if someone looks on your paper, it's okay this time. At the end, please write it in factored form. So if you just put in the magic X, you have not factored. It is only factored when two things are being multiplied by each other. Even if those two things have an X inside, um, All right. Okay, right, someone say out loud what are two numbers that when you multiply them give you a 12, but when you add those same two numbers, they give you a 7. 3 and 4, or 4 and 3. Let's just say someone put in the 4 first and the 3 second. Are they okay? Yes, they're okay. Because 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, it is commutative. That's math talk 4. You can switch it around. I'm going to put the 3 and 4. Um, 3 times 4. Uh, how do I put it down in fact form? The x's have to come along. They must be there, and I'll kind of explain why in a second, but um, hopefully if you're feeling okay about this piece. Um, now, on the test, will they make it bigger and uglier? Yes. I just want you to feel nice and good here early on. Um, for those who know this, I'll apologize to you, math, repeating stuff you already know. The only thing I would tell you is feel good about it, that you're about to get a free credit uh, for something you already know. Okay. I don't know if that would be confusing. Oh, uh, there it is. Let me show one thing. You don't have to write this part. I'm going to foil this. In other words, I'm going to multiply this out to show you that the factored form of this thing really does equal that thing. Now, you don't have to do that. I just want to do it one time, and then we'll do it here. We want to do a million of these, because now, once we've done the fir first one, we've done the second one. We'll do one with a negative in it. That's the best they can do. After that, they can make the numbers big. They can put in uh, decimals, which they probably kind of won't, uh, but that's the best they can do. So let's see if I can do this part right here. Hey, Thomas, foil this. That way a math student can be confused. What I'm about to show is something you don't have to know right now. I just want to show you that this thing, if we were to multiply, it really does give you that. Just the same way when we did 15 uh, is equal to, let's say, uh, 3 times 5. When you multiply 3 times 5, it really does give you 15 back. Okay. So when I multiply this out, it really will, get, will give it back. Here it goes. Uh, quickly, quickly, quickly. Do it in green. Let's make the X's green. I'm going to um, do foil, first, outer, inner, last. That word foil, when I was in high school, they used foil all over the time, all the time, and I didn't know what it stood for. Um, the second guy, I'm going to make you guys blue. So here it comes. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I heard someone say, distribute the X to the X, the X to the 4. Um, then I'm going to do the 3 to the X, and the 3 to the 4. So sort of like if there weren't two numbers there, you know, 3 times x, 3 times 4. Here it comes. Do it fast because this isn't the lesson. This is just me saying this is that. So if you need to take a mental break, you may do so. x times x is x squared. Anybody know what x times 4 is? 4x, thanks for thinking it. All right, um, then we're going to do the, uh, we'll do the, three, the 3 times x. Anybody know 3 times x? Yeah, just 3x. A lot of times the number, they just stick together. And then, of course, uh, 3 times 4 is? Let's see if this paper will let me go up. Below. Hey, Thomas, do we need to do this on the test? No. You do not. So don't feel like, oh, shoot, I forgot how to do this. No, this is not that lesson. This is just me showing you that the x squared is keys back. The 12, keys back. The middle, where's that 7? When I combine those two middle terms, uh, 4x plus 3x is a 7x just to show them that when you write it in factored form, you're not changing anything. You're just um, rewriting it in a different form. All right, so part one of the puzzle, um, right here, hey, what are two numbers that when I multiply them, they give me a negative 15, uh, but when I add those same two numbers, they give me a positive 2. Now, for those who um, choose the numbers, but you're not sure what the sign should be, of the two numbers you choose, whichever one is the largest, the sign down here will attach to the largest number. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Whatever two numbers you choose, whichever one is the largest, um, this bottom one here, if he's positive, the largest number is going to be positive. If this bottom dude is negative, the largest dude is going to be negative. 
the largest dude is kind of a follower. He's in a group, he's in, uh, and whoever's in charge of the group, like if we're hardcore, if the, uh, the guy in charge, he's hardcore, like I'm hardcore. If the person in charge is like kind of cool and mellow, then I'm cool and mellow. But you shouldn't be that way, that's a follower. But for the purposes of our math, we'll do it. Here it comes out, what are the two numbers that we multiply them give us a 15? All right, um, let me put in the numbers first and then uh, we'll choose the sign, but uh -huh, three and the five. Three times five is 15, no big deal. Some people here might have trouble with the positive and negative. Okay, so which one should be positive or negative? Um, well, the bottom number is positive. Therefore, the larger number will be positive. Uh, his friend over here is going to be negative. Now, again, negative 3 plus a positive 5 gives you a uh, positive 2. But I'm going to go positive and negative. You can mess around with the calculator. Once I hand out those calculators to you, you get to mess around and see, okay, what, what does the sign need to be? All right. Have we factored it yet? No. Once you put it in the parentheses, um, then you've done that. I'm about to factor one more, and then we'll get you the second piece of the puzzle. Is okay. Now that I have a factor, how do I get a zero? How do I get an x-intercept? Now I want to put on the um, on the computer at some point to uh, show what the picture looks like, but I may not be able to. We'll see. Here comes um, two parentheses. They both get x's. Uh, the minus 3 goes here, and the plus 5 goes there. Factor, they're giving their points. Why are they doing this? You know, I'm not sure why they why they make you do it. Uh, I think it's just going to expand your mind some. Yes. No, it does not matter. So this big parenthesis here at the end, boom, if we move them here in front of the, the 3, they used to okay. All right, the numbers are important that there. It's a plus 5 and a minus 3, um, but not the order. All right, let's see if I could, maybe I'll do it on this screen. The um, Maybe I'll do the zeros on here. Sure, here it comes. If they wanted me to find zeros, the zeros are always going to be the same number. Oh, let me say what a zero is so you know why for that. A zero just asks, Hey, what number do I need to put in the place of the x to make this parenthesis equal zero? Well, if I put a negative 3 here, negative 3 plus a positive 3, okay, that's zero. That's what they call them zeros. If I walked over here and I said, hey, what number do I need to put in the place of the x to make this parenthesis zero? That's it all. If I put a negative 4, negative 4 plus a positive 4, that's zero. That's one of the reasons I call them zeros. Um, do me a favor. Uh, I will put it below. Usually to put a zero, you just put the number, it's always the same number, to the opposite sign. The same number, opposite sign, I just did a zero. How do you write down officially so you can get it right on the test? A zero has to be stuck inside of a parenthesis with the actual number zero. So the zero for this parenthesis is negative three. How do you write it? Negative three comma zero. Hey, his friend over here is uh, identical twin. Same number, opposite sign. And there's the zeros for that one. I just got two points on your test. Look at that. Yeah. If I get money, uh, that'd be like money for a factor. Do you pay me money for the zeros? Um, so, so far, two things are easy. Do me a favor, write in the zeros for the negative 3 and 5. And even though I wrote a lot of extra junk here, write in your zeros for your, um, for this guy here. That's an easy same number, opposite sign. So yes, yeah, math in the morning, I get that part. Uh, who wants that? But isn't it nice that the three out of four pieces, we have two of them nice and easy. The only thing they can do, which they will, is try to make the original problem extra hard. They won't make it extra easy, and I almost don't like them for that. Uh, let's see, four tables, four tables, I'm going to ask for the zeros. This table here, I'm going to ask for the zero for x minus three. Back table right there, I'm going to ask you guys for the 0 for the x plus 5. Back table right there, I'm going to ask you for the 0 for the x plus 3. Front table here, I'm going to ask you for the 0 for the x plus 4. After that, we will do one problem. I'll have you do the factor and the zeros. Then we'll look for the third piece of the puzzle. Third piece of the puzzle. Again, once you get 3, you're a winner. Uh, here we go. Front table here, what is the 0 for the x minus 3? Say it again. Oh. The 0 for the x minus 3? I think I heard it. 
Uh, it's the same number, opposite sign. Good, good. Back table, the zero for the X plus five. And just, uh, you guys over here, have one person to get ready to say it. Uh, I caught them off guard. All right, um, back table, what you guys got? We'll come back. How about that? We'll come back to you. All right. This table over here. The zero for the X plus three, please. Uh, negative three for the zero. Same number, opposite sign. And then a front table um, for the four, please. All right. Hey, back table. Uh, I left you guys, but I'm coming back to you. Uh, the zero for this guy, please. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Hopefully it feels nice and easy, even if it doesn't mean anything to you. So again, it is always the same number but the opposite sign because the idea is when I have to add these two numbers together to make it equal zero, if I put a regular five, it would be five plus five, oh, that's ten. No, 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 we don't want ten. Yeah, yeah. So as a result, it winds up being the same number, the opposite sign, every single time. You don't have to think about it. I just got you two points. All right, let's see what I can do next. Let me see if I can make them do a whole one, uh, their own, na 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 What's a good one? This guy here. That 24 with positive and negative. That's always a good thing. How about this guy here? Now, again, as we switch, switch problems, just remember when it's time for you to do your six pages, you come back and you fill them in. Um, go to this page. What page number is this one? Go to page four. Uh, do this guy here. What does he want you to do with this parabola? He wants you to factor the parabola. That is, you got to put in the number on the top and the bottom where it should go, um, the side, the whole deal, and then get uh, the zeros. So this time we come over and check mark. Uh, I'll give you a moment. Stuff will be the last number is the one that goes on the top. Um, you got to multiply to get this one. You got to add to get the middle one. Let me put that actually on the magic X. So you got to multiply to get this one. You got to add to get that one. Uh, do you have to do it alone? No, the person next to you is willing to do it with you, you can. But I would say test yourself really fast to see um, if I can get these two numbers. Somebody would be like, hey, you didn't put in that one. Right, so much wrong with that, I'll give you about a minute or so. Now we're doing good work with the easy ones. When we get to the test, we're going to make it kind of extra hard. Um, everyone, These to try to think the easiest version for you. Sometimes uh, math uh, can be tricky, but it doesn't have to be. In a moment, I'll ask for hands. Now don't forget us, we're in a mixed classroom. Some people have seen this before, others have not. The numbers. I'm trying to take care of those. In about 10 seconds, I'll ask for hands. Doesn't mean you have to be done. This means that someone might be done. And that way I can start check marking. <laughs> And the numbers will get uglier as we go along, so hopefully you can get the easy ones to know that once it gets bigger numbers, you knew how to do it. It's just the numbers they changed on. I'm going to do this one, and then um, we'll start digging into the little deeper ones, okay? Um, some of you, even if you didn't get the number part, you knew what you were trying to do. You knew what you were looking for. Uh, and so, again, on day one, uh, some people will, some people won't. Uh, let's see here. So the 18 is on top. The plus 3 is on the bottom. Um, I'll ask the question out loud. What are two numbers that when I multiply them, I'll get an 18, but when I add them, I'll get a 3? Now, the 6 and 3 part is important um, just for those who maybe the, the sign thing, like, oh, I've never been good with positive and negative. You can forget that. Okay, okay. But in terms of just the multiplying, uh, that part will stay the same. Again, if you're not good with positive and negatives, the rule is simply this. If when you have to multiply, the sign is going to be different. The good news is this guy down here, his sign, he's going to tell you what to put on the larger number. So you don't have to really be good with positive and negative. You just need to know whoever the bigger number is, 
his sign will always be in agreement with the guy at the bottom. Well, if these two guys are positive and one of these has to be positive and negative, then this dude over here has to be negative. And that's for people who, again, I'm not that good with positive and negatives. Okay, put in the two numbers. And then let this guy tell you who to uh, make the larger guy. If he were negative, the larger guy would have been negative. Since he's positive, the larger guy is positive. I saw some factoring. Very good. I saw the factoring. Um, factoring has to be the thing with the X's. X's. You know you factored if there's an X plus something, X minus something. Uh, I try to say excited like I am, but my idea is just, hey, talk excited in the math class, so even though the subject may be boring, the teacher doesn't have to sound that way. Uh, someone tell me, um, sure, we'll do this half of the room, this half of the room, instead of making it tables. This half of the room, what is the zero for the six, please? Uh-huh, negative six, zero. Uh, that side of the room, the um, zero for the negative three. Same number, opposite sign. Same number, opposite sign. You will get zeros in unit seven. Uh, second semester of algebra, they're doing the same thing, except their polynomial is uh, a little bit longer. The polynomial is something like this. Uh, it's like um, x to the fourth power plus uh, 3x cubed. Uh, minus uh, 4x. Um, so their thing isn't as simple as yours. They have to do a special thing with this, or they may get the factor form of it, which is they may have this problem to do, and they have to find their zeros. The good news for them, even though this is to the fourth power, their zeros are still same number, opposite sign. Same number, opposite sign. Even though the exponent is bigger, this is second semester. Um, they're unit seven. You guys are just on unit two. Finding their zeros are still the same. So if you can do it now, you can do it then. All right. Um, time is starting to get away. Um, now on to the third piece. I will do the third piece on this one here, even though it's going to look a little ugly. Um, maybe let me do it here. It's going to look a little bit ugly. Fine. Do it here where it looks a little bit ugly. I think I have another one in mind. So, we have factor. We have zero. What was the third thing on our list on page one? So again, uh -huh. LOS. Or line of symmetry. Uh, I'm gonna write it out one long time, one more time. Yeah, line. I want to do the short version. After I write it out this last time, I'm a math guy. We don't want to write out long. If you want to write long, and become an English person. You can write a five-paragraph essay about anything over and over. Get your thesis statement. Um, how do you find the line of symmetry? It's an addition problem divided by two. It's an addition problem divided by two. If you take the, um, the non-zero digits in your um, zeros, you add them and divide by 2. Here comes negative 6 plus negative 6 plus this 3. Well, let me even make them blue so that I can know where they came from. Negative 6 plus 3. All divided by two. It has to be divided by two every single time. The line of symmetry, if you were a picture, simply says I have one x-intercept and I have the other x-intercept. The line of symmetry is always going to be halfway in between them on the picture, and that's what you have there. This one's going to turn out to be a decimal. Do we care? Eh, no, because we know how to punch in decimals into our calculator. If we didn't know how to, then we'd be in trouble. So let's see if I can do this last part here. Line of symmetry. It's going to equal, anybody know what negative 6 plus a 3 is? Negative 6 plus 3. Yeah, it's negative 3. Hey, what if I didn't know that? I was punching in my calculator. Negative 6, make sure you use that, um, the negative sign below the number 3 on your calculator. Don't use the minus sign when you do a negative. Negative 6 plus 3 is a negative 3. And then the calculator, everybody punching really fast. Negative 3 divided by 2. Just, um, this one will come around a little, just to make sure. Um, Negative 3 plus 2, punch in your calculator. If you get an answer on this one, you've gotten three points that you need today. 
Now they're gonna make it look ugly, which is what I'm gonna do when it looks ugly, just like the test light one. But these three pieces are the three important pieces to get you the point. Uh, I see it, I see it. Negative three plus uh, divided by, I see it, I see it. Um, why is he looking uh, on this one? It's a simple problem. Just to make sure that they put in that negative sign, not uh, the minus sign. He's coming around, negative um, three divided by two. I appreciate that, even though I know it's way easier to punch in. Um, so punch in that negative 3 divided by 2, punch in negative 3 divided by 2 in your calculator. That way I can just make sure that um, that will be there. I know some of you still writing on the board. All right, um, so negative 1.5. Let's see if we can get this thing done. We're going to go back to one of the old ones and have you get the line of symmetry on one old one. After that, <laughs> the hardest part. Yeah, I hate the last part. Uh, we're going to get the maxima or the minima. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see if I can back up to one of the other ones we did. They even have space. Is there even space? Is there even space between these for this one? I'm going to try space on that one. Two negative numbers? And I don't like that. And a decimal? Fine. Please find the line of symmetry. Uh, what page is this one, someone, please? So again, <laughs> issue. Page two. Uh, this from far to the right. Please find the line of symmetry. Like how, how are we going to do that? We're going to add and divide by two. We're going to add and divide by two. Line of symmetry doesn't have to be hard. You just have to remember to add and divide by two. So you're going to page two, and you're going to find the line of symmetry on this problem right here. Find the LOS. This one, I'm going to come around with a check mark, and I'm going to try and check it off. Now, today, for some of us, I get it. It's going to feel like a lot of pieces. By the time you get to the assessment, you'll be like, whoa, I don't remember all the pieces. Factor. Here's zeros. Those are guaranteed. That's two out of the four. You just need one more, so if you need to fix your test, this could be the last one that you fit. So after you get the line of symmetry here, um, we'll do um, uh, the hard part. And then we'll try and put it all together in a package and then let you uh, attempt it on your assessment before anybody forgets. The assessment problem is going to look ugly, so the last one we'll do is the ugliest there is. All right. Come around and check to get the LOS, uh, line of symmetry, add, and divide by two. And divide by two. Um, hopefully, even though I was really nervous about this lesson, because I thought about it yesterday and even this morning uh, at about 6 o'clock, um, so far, um, what I thought could have happened hasn't happened until, until what I'm about to do next. Um, any questions about the LOS? Add, divide by two. Um, do it here, or do another problem. Oh, right. The scary part for me. The last of the four pieces was find the maximum. I'm running out of space on this problem here. Um, page four. I ran out of space here. So what I'm going to do is use some of the space over here to get the last piece of the answer. So go to page, am I on page four? What page is this? Oh, it's, this is page four. Page four, and then the ugly version. So easy version, ugly version, and then let them do what they can. Okay? You'll get to see your assessment today, but you'll also get to see it again on Wednesday. All right. Um, hey, Thomas, how do you get the... The uh, maxima uh, minima. You're at the end in terms of the new. This is the last new piece. Uh, vertex. And for those who absolutely hate math, I'm so sorry because this is the type that kind of gets under uh, student skin. Like there's so many pieces, 
making sure we're not doing it. Um, but the idea that you can get to see your assessment today is a good one. All right, here's what you do. We know that x equals the 1.5. When you write down the maxima, it's going to be a um, parenthesis, and it's going to say x is whatever you just got. That part's nice and easy. That's half of it. All that I need now is the y. And once I get the like, once I get the y, um, then then I'm done. So just one last thing, boom, you win. Hey Thomas, how do you get the y? Remember what we did at the very beginning when we punched in our calculator, we had the parentheses and um, like a negative three and all that. Well, this is it. This is it. In other words, I'm going to go back to whatever the original problem was for this one. There's the original problem for this one. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to write this down here, but just for those who can get it by hearing it, I'm going to take this negative 1.5, and I don't know if I knew it was going to be negative 1.5, but I'm glad I did it, and I'm going to put it in here wherever I see an x. And wherever I see an x, I put that in, and it'll spit out an answer. And that will be my y. What is it that he wants us to do? He wants us to put in the place of the x, the negative 1.5. Um, so on your calculator, you have to do blue button quit, blue button quit, or blue button mode. It's, it's the button to the right of the blue button. And I'm going to write over here what they're writing in. They are putting in, um, to get this answer, they are putting in, I think it's something squared, plus, is it 3x that comes next? Okay, plus 3x and an 18. Got it on the board for those like, oh, I'm not sure what he wants. This is going to get us our y. So putting in this negative 1.5. If anyone's not confused now, then I am so happy because this is the scariest part of the book here. Yeah, they're going to get this add and divide by 2 to get the minus m to the x. But then when they have to plug that thing back in to the problem, Will I confuse them? Yeah. The good news is we did it at the very beginning. So really you're just um, putting in negative 1.5, which isn't set very well, raised to the second power. This one I am going to come around and check mark. Then after that I'm going to zoom through the ugliest one, which is going to be a problem. Because it adds an extra step. Give an extra step on the test. They'll have about 15 minutes to do this one. And Wednesday they'll come back to the show. All right, let's find out. Hey, are there any hands out there by chance on this last step? Okay, we got some hands. All right, I'm, I'm coming around. I'm gonna check mark it. Got page 17. I'm gonna do the easy version and then the hard version. Hey Thomas, this is big five in front of the square term. Can we have that? No, we cannot. Hey, Thomas, how do we get rid of that? We simply divide 5 under here, and I'll turn it into 1. But what you do to the first term, you must do to the others. At this point, I've used up a lot of brain power doing step by step by step. Um, some people just get a chance to begin the work. Some of you will have to finish it on Wednesday, but I'm still, I need this part. Hey, Thomas, why did you do this part? The number that you're going to divide by everyone goes out front. What's going to be left inside the parentheses? Well, the y squared. The y squared technically is a um, 1. Oops. 5 goes into 5 one time, and 1 in front of a letter we just don't write, which is y. We'll just find it with just a y squared. Oh, you're trying to write all the stuff I was writing? <laughs> Sorry. Um, the second one minus y this time without all the writing. <laughs> hey, Thomas, where are all the numbers disappearing to? If ever there's one in front of a letter, you don't write it. Uh, how many times does 5 go into 30? Someone, please. So the problem you're about to get on your test, they're going to give you a number up front. How do you get rid of it? You just divide that number below every one. What will happen? You'll wind up with that number out front and inside. Whatever answer you get when you divide, that's what will be there. That's the first trick they're going to do to you, and I apologize. Second trick, if I need to do this, 
Oh, not the second trick. Now what do you do? You have to back trick. Yeah. How do you um, do this one here? There's a minus six on top and a minus one there. Here it comes. In this one, you can just uh, write with me because the hard one is the one where, uh, again, I'm going to go through it. Now that you know what all the pieces are, now you know, oh, I know what he's trying to do. Um, uh, what are two numbers? Someone out loud that when you multiply them give you a negative six, but when you multiply those same two numbers, or add those same two numbers, they give you uh, a negative one. Three and two, if you didn't think of it fast, you don't have to. Right now, I'm just going through the steps again. So you can see what the whole big thing will look like. Um, because three is a bigger number, it has to take on the same sign as the bottom one. And then from there, uh, if I were doing this problem, I would have my factors, factors of the parentheses. So right now you should be along. Okay, he factored. I know where that came from. Then I, he has to get his zeros. Uh, so I'm gonna say what uh, the zero for the negative three will be. Someone else for the two. Right now it's going fast. But so suddenly I go, okay, let's see where you got same number of sign, same number of sign. The other part that if you were doing for us, he's just doing it for us. He, he doesn't want our brains to use for our power, but he just wants to see how they're going to do it on the test. On the test, the only difference is going to be you have to take out a number out front. Once you take that number out front, everybody inside just operates the same old way. Don't be afraid of it. All right, um, he needs to add and divide by 2. Add and divide by 2. So he has a 3 plus a negative 2 which will give us a 1 over 2, which will give us a 0.5. I don't know how to do it with 0.5. Yeah, you do. But you're going to put that x equals 0.5 is LOS. And you're just writing one around. You're not thinking. You're just writing. So you're going to put that LOS into the original, the very first guy before you took away that 5. Uh, you don't, oh, I'll need someone to do it, because I won't be able to do it in my brain. I need someone to put 5, parenthesis, 0.5, so I need someone to help me with this last part. Um, and then a 5, another 0 0.5. People, and this is what people can punch it in fast. If you don't, if you don't, have, if you don't want to punch it in fast, you don't have to, I just need um, the final answer on my um, max. It's going to be the 0 0.5. Now, what should you be feeling, especially those who are like, ah, iffy in math? You should be feeling, okay, I kind of see where you got that from. I see that. Oh, I kind of know where the blue numbers come from. Okay. Um, and if not, you'll review the video, and then I'll get that for you. Negative 31.25. Do I have another one of those? 31.25. All right, I, I got a confirmation on that. Hey, Thomas, can get that last answer? Three win. All right. Um, let me do one more ugly one, and then um, then I'll wish you luck. Right, get the negative 6 and the 1. Um, from here, uh, what are two numbers that will give me the last thing? Top part. And those same two numbers will get me the middle thing, which when there isn't a, um, a, a number there, it's a, a 1. Good question. So it comes from the end, top, middle, bottom. Any other questions? All right, let me uh, do it with the ugliest one I could find. Same steps, and then I'll give it to you, okay? All right. All right, here it goes, here it goes. Um, let me just say it so they can see how ugly it's supposed to be. That very last problem, I don't know what the number is. 
someone tell me and I'll very last problem, last page. Does that have a number on it? Uh, does it have a number on it though? It's just 63? The reason is because on mine it'll just have numbers and even that will have. There it is. There it is. It looks like a big word problem, but it's not. It's just this little problem right here. It looks just like yours. Hey, Thomas, there's a three in front. How do I get rid of the three? I just divide it by everybody. Once I do, here's what I'm left with. Three goes in three, leaving just the T. Um, negative three goes in a nine. Positive three times. If you did on your calculator, you do a negative three divided by, uh, rather a negative nine divided by negative three for those who aren't sure. And this 84, who's on my 84? Somebody do me a favor, do 84 divided by uh, negative three, that way I don't know what it'll be. Now I know you've used a lot of your brain, but I'm going to put it in front of you so at least you get to experience it, do part of it. Once you're here, take it back to the thing we've been doing all this time. What do you mean back to the whole thing we've been doing this time? The negative 28 goes on the top, and the 3 goes on the bottom. Slowly you get to say, hmm, what are two numbers that when I multiply them, I'll give me a negative 28. And when I add the same two numbers, I'll give me a 3. The only thing that makes that difficult is that I'm a little shaky on my timetables. I'm a little shaky on my timetables. I'm not sure what, what time it'll give me a 28. Um, if I'm not so shaky, then I know that 7 times 4 will give me a 28. And one of those numbers has to be negative in order for it to be a negative 28. The good news is, Whatever the sign is on this bottom three, he automatically goes with the bigger number. You don't even have to guess at it. Okay. So you get to be three. Um, have I factored it yet? No, I haven't. The first line, you do the factors. I'm still going to put it in front of you. I'm still going to put it in front of you. There's one point. Your second point, they want the zeros. The good news is the zeros go right down here, but I can put them right here below to start off with. And then um, they ask for the maximum minimum next, but I put down the um, LOS next. Let me give this thing so at least they can start it. So at least they can start it. I'm not going to do the maximum because it's extra long to do. Um, I just have it there. And the last thing I do is to, to plug it in. Uh, I don't know if I'm able to do. The original thing was the negative three um, of the squared, and then what did I have? Oh, this is what I had to do at the very beginning of class. I remember now. Now I know why I had them do it. The negative nine. This is just what I had them do at the very beginning of class. And the uh, eighty-four. It's eighty-four. Yeah. Exactly what I had him do at the beginning of class. Yeah. Uh -huh. You don't have to get the answer there. Um, right. 